In this video, we discuss the Data Protection Act 1998 as it was listed in the specification when published, and we also include updates to the DPA to include GDPR. So before we get going, a quick note from the exam board. The OCR clarification document states that they're aware the law is constantly changing and some of the mentioned laws and acts, most notably the DPA, are likely to change over the course of the specification. Answers will be accepted that use an interpretation of the law based on when the specification has started or when the exam was sat. And indeed, since this specification was released, DPA has been updated and it's now the Data Protection Act 2018, which includes the UK's implementation of GDPR. So in essence, whether you refer to the 1998 or the 2018 version of the DPA, they serve the same purpose. They control how your personal information is used by companies and the UK government. The original 1998 Act covers data stored on a computer or paper and introduced a number of key roles. Firstly, there's the data subject. This is the person who has data about them stored somewhere outside of their control. So typically you can think of yourself as a data subject. Then we have a data controller. This determines what data an organisation collects and how it's collected process or stored. There's the data commissioner or the information commissioner. And this is the person who has the power to enforce the Data Protection Act. This is an independent public body that reports directly to Parliament and is appointed by the Crown. Information covered by the Data Protection Act tends to fall into two broad categories, personal data and sensitive data. Personal data includes anything, for example, like names, addresses, bank details, date of birth and details of financial transaction. Sensitive data is information such as your nationality or an ethnicity, your political beliefs, genetics, biometrics, etc. Sensitive data is subject to additional legal protections. So the original Act of 1998 was based around eight main principles of data protection. And these principles are outlined on the left. Data should only be collected and used fairly and inside the law. It should only be held for very specific reasons. It should only be used for the registered purpose that it was intended. The data collected should be adequate, relevant, and it shouldn't be excessive. It is the responsibility of the person collecting data to keep accurate and up-to-date records. They mustn't keep the data for any longer than is absolutely necessary. They have a responsibility to keep the data safe and secure, and they mustn't transfer your data outside the European economic area unless the country they're transferring it to has adequate data protection laws themselves. It also outlines the various rights held by people, the data subjects, regarding the handling of their personal data. So as a data subject, you might not be aware that any company, for example, social media sites, online shopping sites, you have various rights under the laws. You have the right of subject access and the right of correction. You can request any data that's held on you, and if you find it's inaccurate, you can demand that they correct it. You have a right for your data to prevent distress to you, and you have a right for your data not to be used for direct marketing should you wish. You have a right to prevent automatic decisions about yourself being made purely on the basis of data without any human interaction. You have the right, obviously, to lodge a formal complaint with the Information Commissioner's Office. And if a flaw has been found, you have the right for compensation. Around 2015, the European Union began working on the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR. The aim was to strengthen and standardise data protection regulations across Europe. Existing UK laws already covered almost all these new provisions. In 2018, the DPA was updated to bring it in line with GDPR. 
So with GDPR, again, we have these set of principles and they look fairly similar. Data must be processed lawfully, fairly and in a transparent manner, collected for specified reasons, must be adequate, relevant and limited, must be accurate and kept up to date, can't be kept for longer than necessary and must be processed in a manner that ensures security. One of the major new things that was added was that data controllers must be able to prove that their data protection measures are sufficient to protect your data. So one final note from the exam board. In this area of the specification, a question may be asked on the social and ethical impacts of a specific technology in a specific scenario or context. These are called level of response answers. Now to gain the highest level, candidates will need to discuss the moral, social or legal elements which are relevant to the question. And because as a context, every point you make should be in the context or related after the context. If the question requires a judgment or conclusion, then this needs to be given and justified against the context. You must be careful when answering questions like this, because simply regurgitating facts that you know about a piece of legislation without relating it to the context of the question could end up resulting in naught marks. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is the Data Protection Act and what are its main principles?